Hello lovely people of the world, welcome back to my channel. Today I will be doing a draw with me video where I walk you through one of my illustrations. I use the second generation iPad Pro and the second generation Apple Pencil. And the app I use is Procreate. I love Procreate. I have the whole Adobe suite, but Procreate is still my favorite. So if I'm going to do an Instagram post, I just use the standard square canvas option and I alternate between these brushes, the dry ink brush, the technical pen brush, and the Narinder pencil. So I usually start off with the Narinder pencil, Narinder pencil for sketches. So I'm just going in and drawing some ropes and a little crescent moon and then sketching in some sage leaves. I'm drawing a bundle of sage here. This is just a really rough sketch, just like, so I have like a guideline for like placements and all that kind of stuff. Um, but I'm drawing over the entire thing later. And I'm just going in with purple and sketching in some lavender. So this is like a, like a sage bundle that you would burn. That's what this illustration is inspired by. And so I'm just merging the sketch layer and lowering the opacity so that you can see it but it doesn't get in the way. And then I'm using the dry ink brush to draw a little crescent moon. So I do that by drawing a circle, duplicating the circle, making it a little bit smaller and then placing it inside like so and you can see the shape of the crescent moon on the left. And then I'm merging those two layers and then rubbing out the part of the moon that I don't want just so that I only have the crescent left over. So that's how I always draw like crescent moons or pretty much all moons. I start with just circles and cutting out shapes from circles. So it's pretty simple. Um, and I am just like seeing how it fits and then I'm just going to leave that on the side for now while I draw in the ropes. So I'm just like drawing these circle things to be the ropes, if that makes sense. Like, like twine, like you know how twine's twisted? So that's what I'm doing there. And then I just duplicated that layer for the rope going the other way. And I found that this rope is a bit short, so I'm just gonna draw a few more circle things to make the rope longer. And then I'm duplicating that and rotating it for the middle rope. Once I have that all done, I am going to go back to the moon layer and move the moon over on top of that. So it's going to be like a moon charm, like on rope, if that makes sense. So yeah, I'm just going to place that there like so. And then I'm going to rub out where the rope shows through because the moon's supposed to be on top of the rope. So you're not supposed to actually see that part of the rope. And then now I'm going in and just drawing the rope on the bottom part of the sage bundle. So pretty much the same process, just a whole bunch of little circles and that's it. My, com my camera cut out when I was drawing the shape of the crystal, but it's pretty simple. It's just straight lines. And then I just rounded off the top while it kind of made it more flat. And now I just kind of draw random lines in the crystal like to show the angles in it, I guess. You can pretty much do this however you like and it always ends up looking like alright. So I usually just wing it. Um, and then I'm going to go in and draw some cracks in the crystals just to give it a more like organic vibe, I guess. And once I'm done with the crystal, I'm opening a new layer and I'm going to go ahead and draw some lavender. So I start with a stick. And then I do a new layer for the actual buds and then I just draw these round little teardrop shapes for the buds. And the reason I do it on another layer is you can see the line through the middle of the buds. So I can erase that later. So that's handy. Yeah, so I'm just drawing three of those. They're very simple. And then I'm going ahead and erasing any lines that I don't want. Like so. And I've decided that I want like a little tassel on the end of the rope. So I just drew like a guide on the sketch layer. And now I'm going back onto the rope layer and extending this rope with a knot 
that's a knot there. So starting off with a little knot thing and then I'm extending the rope exactly the same. And then I'm putting a little star bead at the end of it. I can't really draw stars like freehand, so I'm just trying my best here. And now I'm gonna go ahead and draw like the bottom part of the sage. So that's pretty much just a whole bunch of sticks. So all I'm drawing here is just loads of sticks. And then, so I'm starting with like a base layer of sticks, but it all looks too straight. So I'm going on another layer, as you can see now, and drawing some like more angled, shorter sticks. And kind of just looks less like weird. Um, now I'm gonna go ahead and draw the leaves. So the leaves kind of bulge out like so, because the rope is like holding it in and the leaves like naturally wanna bulge out. So that's like the form I'm going for here. So I'm just going ahead and drawing a whole bunch of leaves just randomly. Um, sage is a tricky one to draw because of all the dimension. Um, like in the sage bundle and all the shadows and highlights. So kind of hard, but I'm kind of just doing this randomly and it's like working. So yeah. So I'm going in with the technical pen to start filling it in. So I have a layer underneath the line work. Um, so I'm going over the technical pen with this green and just outlining it because I like to just use the paint box tool after I outline it, just like that. And you can just drop the paint in and it fills in the whole area inside the outlines. So now I'm going ahead with like a darker green. So it's like, it's like the same green, but I just changed the, changed the like hue and stuff to make it a little bit darker. So I'm just going in and adding shadows in just random places. I don't, I've like never learned like shadows and that kind of stuff like in art school or anything. So I don't really know like the physics of it or how anything works. The rule that I generally follow is like if something is in front, it'll have shadows behind it and you need to pick somewhere from for the light to come from. So for me, it's the right hand side. So I'm putting all my shadows on the left, as you can see. So I usually do like one, no, I usually do like two shades of green. So here you can see I'm going in with like a darker green and just like giving more depth to those shadows. So I'm just putting that in on the left hand side and underneath everything, which just gives it more depth and just makes it look a little less flat, gives it some more interestingness. I don't know. And now I'm drawing like the veins of the leaves. So I'm just doing a little line in the middle of each leaf with that darker color. And now I'm going in with a lighter green and doing the highlights on the right hand side, like so pretty much exactly as I do the shadows, just with a lighter color and on the opposite side. And now I'm going in with a monoline brush. You can play with the spacing of this brush to make it dotted. I like to do like dotted highlights on leaves because it just reminds me of like the, the glistening and like the dewiness of leaves. I don't know, I think it just adds like a, a magical touch. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm going on top of the highlight with the whitest color with this spaced out monoline brush. And it gives it like a shimmery dewy effect. You can't really see it this far away, but yeah. Now I'm going in with some pink for the ropes. I chose pink because of the contrast with green so it stands out. There's a lot of green in this illustration. Um, yeah, so I'm just blocking in with that one color of pink on the ropes like so. And then I'm going in with a darker shade and doing exactly what I did with the leaves. I'm just making it darker on the bottom of the rope like so all around and then I'm going in with a lighter color and making it lighter on top of the rope. And now I'm going in with yellow to fill in this star charm. And then this moon charm. And then I'm going in with darker colors exactly the same as the leaves and just adding some shading and some highlight like so. Now I'm starting up a new layer and I am going in with some purples to fill in the lavender. 
So like when you look at lavender, like in real life, there's like a few different shades of purple. So I'm going in with like bluish purples and then more of a like purpley purple like this one here. And then I'm shading that, I shaded it in exactly the same as the leaves and the charms. I didn't want to film that part because it was kind of boring and this video is getting very long. So yeah, I'm going in um, with the purple, with the crystal. I'm just blocking it with purple and then shading it exactly the same with two different dark purples. And then I'm adding in these streaks, which like represent the just like the natural texture of crystals they have these streaks when they hit the light so i'm just adding that in for some more interesting texture and then i'm going in with a lighter color and highlighting it the same with my crystals i like to highlight with like a light yellow as i'm doing now just because like crystals often have like multiple colors inside them because they're like a prism and yeah so now I am just going in and choosing a background. I like to play around with a whole bunch of different colors until I find one that I'm happy with. And I've decided to go with this purple color because it kind of like ties it together with the lavender and the purple crystal. Um, so now I'm going in with a dry ink brush with a white color. And I am like making a layer at the very back, like bottom layer. and going in with a white outline. This just makes the element pop. I do this with a lot of my illustrations so that they stand out from the background. And I decided to put some rose petals in because I found that it looked kind of boring and the rose petals with the red might make a nice pop of color. So I'm just filling these in with this pink and then going by the natural colors of rose petals, I'm adding a bit of yellow and then a bit of like a darker pink to the edges of the petals, like so. I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm just having fun with that. Anyways, now that's done, I am going to move on to fi final touches, finishing touches. So I'm drawing these sparkle things and I'm just like playing around with it. I started off by coloring it yellow but I wasn't sure if I wanted yellow. So once I filled that in, I looked at it and then I was like, I will try white. So I changed the color to white and then I merged the outline with the thing. I didn't, I didn't really like it as white. So I changed it back to yellow. And a lot of this happens like throughout my drawing process. I've actually like skipped most of my like decision changing stages in this video otherwise this video would go forever like this took me like a few hours to draw as well so i'm just outlining this sparkle to make it pop and stand out because there's like quite a few colors going on here and then i am going in and drawing like some sparkles at the top it just adds a magical vibe i like to add sparkles to all of my illustrations because they're just fun so I'm going in with a whole bunch of different shapes here and just having fun with it. After I finished most of them, I decided to change it to white because the black looked kind of funny. I think I like the white better. And I just continued drawing more sparkles until I was happy with it. And I think that's it. So. There you go. Ta-da!